Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This video is all about what I've read in February and it isn't all that much, but I've tried. I've also been traveling quite a lot, so I haven't been that able to read as much as I wanted to, but the good news is that I have fulfilled my reading goal for this year and I don't really know what I feel about it. I had a goal of reading 12 books this year and now I've read 12 books and I have no idea how this affects my reading motivation, but let's just see how this progresses. But let's get to the books I've read this month. And the first is The Rot by Siri Petersen. This is the second book in the Raven Ring series about our main girl, Hirka, who lives in this society where everyone has a tail, but she doesn't, and she's different. And in the first book, she sort of understood partially why she's different. And in the second one, she has a deeper understanding of why she doesn't have a tail. Let's just put it that way. The second one is put in a totally different environment as the first one, so it's kind of different. It's more urban fantasy than the first one, which is quite kind of pure YA, regular high fantasy. I regret not having read the first one closer to than this, because there's so many expressions I've I had forgotten and I lost track of a lot of names. So if I'd read them more closely, that would be a great advantage. I still really like this one. It has a lot of curious characters. Our main girl, Hirka, is still a badass and she's a very cool main character. Since this is the second book in a trilogy, I can't escape the feeling that it's a bit like the transportation round in the book series. It feels like we need this one to get from A to B to B to C. There's nothing wrong with that, but now I just feel like I have to read the last book quite quickly, and I'm guessing that I will be reading that in this month, because I don't want to forget names and traits of the people or all that kind of stuff. Then it was finally time for me to read Thomas Espedal, that was a name that showed up when I read Kneuskor and his struggles, and he really seemed to like Thomas Espedal. And the reason I didn't read Thomas Espedal straight away is because he sort of seems like a jerk. So he was in the newspaper last year or the year before that, talking about female authors from the countryside just being simpler beings, it seemed like. They didn't really write real novels or real literature as he does. But still, I needed to know what the fuss was all about. And the one here is called Against Art and the other one is called The Tramp or The Art of Living a Wild and Poetic Life. They're both about himself, but they're completely different. The book about walking is about him hiking around meeting people, thinking about books and authors, visiting places that have been mentioned in books he likes. And it's at times quite funny. Also, it's well written, but it also reminds me kind of of Knevsko since they're both about himself. I can't shake the feeling of when I read books that aren't obvious, obviously about himself, they're more like this could be about you or it could be about anyone else, who knows. But anyway, I found that to be quite a humorous read and I did enjoy it. Then it's Against Art and I thought this would be about art. I do love reading about art, so I thought that would be something I could enjoy. But it's rather a tragic or sad story from his own life. And also about him wanting to become an author or at least becoming an author. So it's more like striving towards art rather than a story about art. But that might also be two sides of a story, I guess. Ended up not liking this as much as the first one. This had more humor and he also mocked himself quite a bit, or that's at least what I thought he did. So that always helps. But I've read Thomas Espedal and now I can get on with my life. And I did so in the worst possible way by reading Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. At least this book made me realize that I don't like horror in general. Not only this one, but all of them. So 
I guess that is a positive. It's about a man, a musician, so that should have been a positive for me. Also, there's a lot of musical references all over the place. Should have been a plus, wasn't. But at least this musician buys a ghost and then is haunted by the ghost. So that's basically it. I don't know, there are some twists and turns, but in general that's the gist of it. And I, I just fall asleep, I, I can't really focus, and after a while I don't... I just give up and I don't care about anything regarding this book. I bought this as one of the first books I bought for this channel, so three years ago I thought if I'm going to read horror this should probably be the first book I seek out. I was wrong of course, but at least now, unless someone persuades me, I will not read any more horror. Then over to the last book I read, and it's The Purge by Sophie Oxenen. She's a Finnish author, and this won the Nordic Council Literature Prize in 2010, I believe. It's about this older woman finding this younger woman in her lawn in 2000 and... No, in 1992. We're in Estonia, but we're going to travel quite a lot. So it is written both in a diary form and not, and it switches between people and places all of the time. So we're going back to the Second World War and German occupation and then communist occupation in Estonia and then liberation. So it's a bit all over the place, but it's so, so thrilling. Maybe towards the middle of it I thought that it was getting a bit slow and I was wondering where all this was heading. But in general it had a great pacing and it was quite thrilling. More thrilling than I than I anticipated. Also at times it's a bit bleak. It's, there are passages in this one that's just a bit hard to read. So these women have been through a lot. Let's just put it this way. I have been reading quite a lot of Nordic Council Literature Prize winners, so it was refreshing to read a book that I liked as much as I did with this one. So this is a, a recommendation if you're into historical fiction and Eastern European history in general, I guess. Also if you like to read about suffering and thrilling stuff, so do recommend this. Without me knowing how historically correct this book is, it was interesting to read about a corner of the world I don't often think about and I don't really know how much they've been through, apart from like the very big picture stuff, I guess. So these were the books I read in February. I had some pleasant reading experiences. I'm guessing that I will seek out more books from Oxenen and also see a petition. So let's just see what March will bring. Hopefully warmer weather and sunshine. What is the best reading experience you had in this month? Please come below so we can discuss and I can get more recommendations. I hope you have a really terrific weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!